I want to educate the masses on the great life that I've had in sales and want you to understand how you can get into sales as well. My mission is really to help individuals, sales professionals, elevate their game and take it to the next level. I am all in 100% because we need to change the face of sales to show people how they can change how they sell without changing who they are. What actions do we take to actually see different outcomes? That is the question. Hi, I'm Lindsay. I'm Larry. And I'm Joyce. Welcome to the Sales View. Hey, you guys, Good thank morning. you for joining us this morning. Look at you guys. Larry always got such a big smile on his face. Just <laughs> love it. Just love it. So, hey there. Today, we're going to talk about mental health and sales. Ha, what a topic. You know, um, you know, I read a recent article from Del Dupree, the sales rebellion, the copy champion. Um, he's very active on LinkedIn. He puts out a lot of really great things on mm -hmm. his platform. And he's been very open and honest about talking about mental health and emotional struggles as a part of sales. And he has some definite ideas around why that happens. But I'd like to hear from you guys today before we get started on why you think that um, the sales profession has been deemed. You know, I really honestly believe it's in any profession, but we're talking about sales here today, you guys, um, because, you know, we love sales and we don't want to run you from sales. But why do you guys think what are those triggers in sales that drive that kind of emotional, mental stress for us? You want to kick us off, Larry? Uh, I will. It's uh, I mean, I'll, let, let's rewind back to 2006. Yes. <laughs> and uh, I was coming off of an unsuccessful business and I went to my first official sales job making 150 cold calls every day with numbers and targets that I had to hit. That's stressful. I mean, I uh, I played baseball in front of crowds of thousands of people screaming at me. But when you're on the phone with someone who is not expecting your call, is not welcome to your call, and you've got your manager uh, pretty much demanding, you've got to get these signups. Let's go. It's like, oh, uh oh, that'll mess with your head. I mean, it's one of those things where uh, kind of like in baseball, sometimes you're hot. Sometimes you're not, and you got to keep that happy medium. Sales is tough. It's demanding. And, and the sales culture, some people call it the bro culture. It's go, 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 high charging. That's not necessarily good. I call it for your MBS, your mind, your body, and your soul. So that's where we see some of the challenges. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, Mental health, I think what people don't realize is really it's a spectrum, right? So right. it's not like I'm, you know, super depressed uh, or or I'm super happy. It's, you know, there's a whole lot of stops along the way. So, you know, yeah. you can experience things like anxiety and burnout. Those are those are kind of the ones that I have more experience with before you get into some of the other um, symptoms that are, are much more serious. And uh, I was reading an article too about stress the other day and how stress can be positive. Uh, so, you know, it can be motivating. It can kind of keep you going. But then when it gets to a point where you're still going, but you, you are having physical symptoms, you need a break, then that's when it's starting to become burnout. So this, the story that I wanted to share actually was um, when I was in a job transition, I find, I find when you're moving between roles, that's some of the the most stressful stressful times that you can have and i i remember one specific time where i was switching roles switching and i on top of that i was in charge of recruitment for our department um and i was trying to train up the new guy coming in behind me and i just remember sitting in my office one day and just being in tears and somebody knocked on the door it was my boss at the time and came in and she was like Oh my goodness, what's going on? And I, I just, I was like, is this a test? Is this, you know, I've been, I've been working 16 hour days for the last month and two jobs plus recruiting, you know, is this, is this a test? And so she just kind of sat and listened to me. Um, but then we found a way to, to get some stuff off my plate too. So I think, uh, yeah, sorry, that was kind of a long-winded answer, but it, no, it's very it can short. Think of, yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> it just seemed long because it's your story and you're sharing it. You know, yeah. the, the thing that came to me when um, you were talking was that whole word we're talking about a lot these days of vulnerability, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. That you actually felt in that space at that time, you had to be vulnerable and you had to share what you were experiencing it. And kudos to your leader for actually sitting there and listening. Yeah. Yep. So that's what that's what I was thinking. It, it wasn't long at all. Yeah. OK, because, yeah, it's it's funny, too. I mean, I think there's so much stigma around mental health. There's so much stigma around this sort of stuff that people get very uncomfortable with it very easily and they don't know how to support. And what I loved about her and what she was able to do for me was just to sit and, and be with me and listen and show that she genuinely cared at that point in time. Yeah. So, yeah. Yes. And, and that's important, you know, um, that you, you know, just sit there and listen to a person. I think I did a, a video once when people say, oh, how are you? And we automatically say, oh, we're doing great. Mm -hmm. You know, and we're really not. It's, you know, especially here in the South where I grew up, Lindsay, you know, that's mm -hmm. just, you know, how are you? Oh, awesome. You know, <laughs> you know and, so, and, and sales, right, Larry? When sales, we're, we're, everyone expects us to be that, those happy people, sales people bouncing around in the world. And so, you know, I found before that when someone says, how are you? And I'm like, you know, I'm just not, I'm not having a good day. People don't know how to respond to that, right? They it they it it, it completely throws them off their game, you know, when you when you tell when you oh true. So we put this mask up, right? And um they say, How are you? Like, oh great. You know, I see Larry wrote some notes. What what's up, Larry? What do you got? Yeah, yeah. Well, what really stood out is the word care. And uh, it, it's caring for our people, our colleagues, and it's showing them that we care and that we're here to support and listen however they need us. And and just like you shared the spectrum, Lindsay, different people need different things. Mm -hmm. and, and oftentimes it's just an ear. They don't they don't need your advice. They just want someone that 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 opens up and now gives them a virtual hug. I was on a panel last Thursday with some sales leaders from Hootsuite and Pendo and Seismic, and they shared that in, in today's digital environment, in today's remote environment, their, their, their reps just want to know that you care. And it's the little things that mean so much. I just had this conversation last night with my wife. It's great to, to have the company uh, send you a gift card and give you money. I mean, no one's going to complain about money. But she said, hey, if my boss had gotten me a customized lunchbox, because we're going back to school, my kids are back in school. If she had gotten a lunchbox that said Trey and another lunchbox that said Lucia, she said that would have meant so much more than an Amazon gift card because it shows that she put thought into it. It shows that she's actually that she really cares. And it's just a, a little gesture little gesture that goes a long way. I'll never forget. And Joyce, you're familiar with this story. My okay. mentor, my good friend, Mark Winchester, and I, I don't want to give away my whole chapter, but we were going to the Great Wolf Lodge and we show up and they said, Mr. Long, here goes a $100 gift card or $50. I don't even know the amount. It was it was substantial, but it was just the, the thought. He had called ahead and paid for a gift card for us at the Great Wolf Lodge uh, indoor water park. I will never forget that. I will never, ever forget that. Amongst other things that he's done when my father passed away, he was there uh, on the phone. He showed up in person. Th those are moments that folks will never forget. I'll never forget. And you think about it, we have these chances each and every day to help impact others. But I also want to share, it's important for us to make sure that we fill our cup. We put our mm -hmm. oxygen on so that we can give oxygen to other folks using that, the airplane analogy. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I share with you guys for the call yesterday, there's sometimes I just have to shut it down. Right. And mm -hmm. yesterday was one of those days. Um, you know, I was, uh, my resistance had been low. I've been tired. Um, I was, I was exhausted. So when you talk about the, the scale you know, of things, I felt um, just really kind of emotionally drained, you know, maybe the mental drain, right? And I just told myself, you know, I had a couple of calls in the morning, but they were, you know, things that I just wanted to do for the business and check. So I kind of, um, you know, canceled things out and um, honestly just kind of got back in my bed with the iPad. And then I said, you know, Joyce, turn the iPad off, right? 
And I've learned over the years when to give myself that time. Mm. You know, I've learned over the years when to take that break for myself. And I think if I could share anything with people is to listen to your body and listen to your mind. And when your body and your mind tells you I'm tired, listen to it and, and, and give it the break that it needs. And no matter what's going on. And I know it is very hard as sales individuals. We have quotas. We have goals. You know, um, I can remember talking to a leader um, I was going through some challenges at work, not on performance. My performance was great, but it was all the other stuff in the office. And I went to one of my um, leaders in the BRG and it was the last week of the month. And he said, he said, the first thing I want you to do is just take this week off. Wow. Yeah. Wow. He said, I want you to take this week off. And Scott Hutchinson, I never forget that. I, 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 I look at him like he was crazy. I was like, huh? <laughs> he said, I want you to take this week off. He said, I want you to, to rest, you know, and give your, I want you to give your, your um, self time to rest and then come back and let's tackle this. And that's mm -hmm. what I did. And it made all, to me, it made all the difference in the world. Yeah. I think too, I mean, I'm recalling a story of when we had a young, young sales rep in our organization who was physically getting sick because he was on the road, just, you know, hammering the pavement week after week, day after day. Um, because that's, I, I think that's, you know, with sales, that's how, what you're expected to do sometimes, you know, it's like what Larry was saying before, you gotta, you gotta get it done, right? That's, you know, knocking on doors, keeping your irons in the fire, whatever we want to call it. It's, you know, that, that kind of intensity. Um, and it's just not, it's not humanly possible to keep that intensity up um, for such a long period of time. And so it can start to, to eat away at you, especially, I think, if you're not having success at it too. And I think that's the other thing with sales that makes it so tough is um, there was this quote, I think it was an Einstein quote or something like that. The definition of insanity is, is doing the same thing over and over and expecting mm -hmm. different results. But right. in sales, the, the ironic thing about that is you can do the same thing over mm -hmm. and over and you can get different results sometimes, <laughs> right? <laughs> what works for one customer doesn't work for another one, but you know, so it's also one of those things where it's not a formula necessarily, right? So you have to kind of give yourself a bit of grace there. Yeah. It, it's interesting because we've got social media and for us, LinkedIn is kind of the business sandbox, but then you got Instagram, you got, uh, yeah. I don't know, TikTok and Twitter and you see the best of, of people's lives, which makes you think, oh, what's going on with me? Yeah. Why am I not flossing? Why am I not uh, wilding out like all these other people? And it's like, that's not reality. Yeah. Like, let's keep it real. And I mean, folks ask me all the time, how are you happy all the time? I'm not happy all the time. What? <laughs> I'm a human. Come on, Queen. <laughs> Shoot, I got two kids. You're I'm not? Seven. It would be impossible to be happy all the time. I'm married, which always presents. It's, I'll just tell you, never a dull moment. There's always <laughs> something going on. Save the drama for your mama. But it's, it's one of those things where, we're all humans and we all go through the twists and turns, the ups and downs, highs and lows. For me, and I would love to get y'all's thoughts, for me, I try to make a conscious choice to look at things from a, a, the lens of the positive. What can I learn? It didn't work out the way that I wanted it to. My son's behavior is off the chain. I, I wonder where he got it from. I'm getting calls from the teachers. <laughs> he must get it from his mama. He didn't get it from me. Uh, it's sure. of controlling the controllable and how you adapt. I would love to hear what are some strategies that folks can use to really maintain a good mental mental state through the ups and downs of sales, which isn't a four letter word, but also life, which is a four letter word. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I would say, um, you know, what, what I do for myself is like, kind of like what I've been doing this morning. I have my, my tea, you know, I like to get up um, in the morning and have that time just to be with myself. Right. That yeah. may, and it looks different each morning. The thing that's only permanent every morning is my green tea and my vitamin C. <laughs> but, you know, sometimes it may be a podcast. Yesterday, I listened to a, a podcast um, that Nicole North did, um, you know, about around vulnerability. It may be listening to audiobook. It may just be praying. It, you know, it may, it looks different um, every morning. But I think you have to give yourself time to set your day. 
And I say that for myself, but I'm a single individual that live at home by myself right now, right? Except for when, and when my niece was here with me for two months this summer, it was hard to get that personal time. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys as parents and, and, you know, as spouses, I don't know, you, you know, what do you guys do? Yeah. I mean, I guess, yeah, there's, there's the question of life and then there's the question of, um, of sales or a sales perspective. But I, I mean, for me, I, I like to take, I like a good bath, you know? So if I'm, I'm stressed out, I'll go soak in the tub, put on a candle, mm -hmm. read a good book, uh, turn off the social, turn off the, the television. Like that's, you know, uh, those are the things that I have to turn off. Um, I think from a sales perspective, what, what helped me kind of manage my anxiety and stress when I was, um, when I was in those roles, uh, were kind of some, some productivity strategies too. So if I had something, an activity that I found particularly stressful, um, that I only had to do once a, a week or, or once a day or something, I try and like batch it, um, so that, I would do it in an hour. So, you know, if it was, was cold calling or something like that, I would try and do those, you know, the specific calls within an hour. And I think that helped me because I would know when I was done, I knew when I was going to start it. And then I, and then I'd know, okay, we're done for the day. You can let it go. Like you can breathe. Um, so I know that that always helped me, but I think too, what Larry was saying um, is especially important in sales, being able to look at things through a different lens. Um, and so when you're kind of in that moment where you are feeling stressed out, being able to kind of get some perspective is, is super helpful. Yeah. I've, uh, I've, been, I've been working with a couple of sales reps. I'm sorry, Joyce. No. The one thing that's come up a few times is the imposter syndrome. The mm. uh, I can, I, I don't belong here. Mm -hmm. And what I shared with folks is I have a brag book. It actually, it's not a real book, but it's uh, it's really the recommendations of folks. It's the accomplishments of the mm -hmm. past that if I ever need a pick me up, I can go to that and really remind myself, ding dong, wake up, dog. You've done this before successfully. When I get down low, it's mm -hmm. like just a reminder, a little pick me up. And, and I love what you said in terms of the one hour blocks, the scheduling. I think time management and, and really organization. When you're organized it just it allows it, it, it allows you the space it allows you Joyce you talked about having your morning routine and and I think you said the green tea and vitamin C you're you're rhyming on us this morning I love it but having that routine that that really allows you to kind of know with certainty that I'm gonna wake up and oh the green tea and the vitamin C is gonna get my day started and we're gonna <laughs> rock and roll from there. So I love both of those. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I actually I wasn't gonna say anything, Larry. I just saw your mind chiming. So I've, I've kind of I've learned to pick up on your 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 cues, your mind language. So I was about to say, well, Larry's thinking of something. That you know, that's where I was. You know, one thing I typed in in the chat was what does mental health look like, right? Mm -hmm. uh, when I was listening to that, um, um, podcast yesterday with Nicole North, and she was. They were talking about vulnerability and what does vulnerability look like virtual in a virtual space, right? Mm -hmm. And how hard that is to really display in a virtual space, right? They they struggled with saying what does it look like in a virtual space. They talk about what it looked like, what it feel like um, in that virtual space. So you know, um, I was talking to a friend, and they were saying, you know, well, how do you know virtually if someone's having an issue? And I think even in person. When they when we see salespeople, your salespeople are your strong people. They're your positive people. They're we know how to turn it on, right? Mm -hmm. We know how to go from as they say zero to a hundred, right? We know how to turn it on. So then you know um, you know she said, well, what does it look like? And I was like, well, hey, you know, it can look like this, right? Because we think the strong people don't. We for some reason we just don't think that they um, have mental or emotional drainage. Mm -hmm. And um, so we continue to add more on them. And you think about it too. Um, we care, you know, sometimes stronger people. And I say we, because I, I feel like I want they carry the weight of the world, right? I'll answer my phone and someone's kind of, you know, telling me and sharing with me what they're going through, not knowing that I may be going through something myself. Mm -hmm. That's right. 
Yeah. I love that you asked that question too, Joyce, because I was going to talk about it as well, too. Um, I think, you know, as you mature, you start to realize what your sign, what the stress signs are in yourself or when, you know, when you need to take a day. But um, it's also important for us to recognize those in others. And you're right. Being in a virtual space is so much, so much more difficult. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of the things that I've seen, though, that I've learned as well is um, – it can be things like if somebody's normally on camera with you on a Zoom call or something like that, and all of a sudden they're not turning their camera on, um, maybe their emails or, or their communication, their messages with you is getting a bit short, uh, not short in length, but more like short in, okay, terse. Um, so those are some things that that I try and look for too is, uh, is kind of that those subtle changes, I guess, in behavior. And and they're not always obvious too. You're right, Joyce, like it can look like this, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Great, great points. I uh, I think it comes down, there, there, there's several techniques. I, I love questions. When you ask questions, and then like you said, Lindsay, it could be subtle. If you listen and you know someone, you really know them, you can pick up generally it's that vibe that something isn't right mm -hmm. larry you're a little bit off like you're you're smiling you're laughing but it ain't it ain't the normal larry and it's kind of crazy because throughout my career i normally have a shelf life of two years in corporate america i, I start <laughs> to get that itch and then my wife she feels it because i'm still good but i'm not great and she's like uh-oh is it about that time again? And i'm like you know me all too well. <laughs> and it's one of those when you ask your colleagues, you ask your, your, your direct reports, you ask them, how are you? And then you shut the heck up and you really listen and you watch them. Like you said, the, the visual cues, it's like ding dong, the little light is going off. And it's funny you mentioned the story, Joyce, about Adele Dupree, the, the sales rebellion. He's the, the head rebel. Uh, I got to meet Dale in person yeah. here in Raleigh. This was probably three weeks ago. Cynthia Barnes was there, yeah. some yeah. other folks. And uh, we, we had the conversation about burnout, about the culture, the, the sales culture. And it's one of those things where some folks say it is what it is because it's always been that way. Mm -hmm. What I like about Dale is we're going to shake this up and say, there's got to be a better way. Yeah. We can't keep doing it this way just because we've always done it that way. That doesn't make any daggone sense. So it's it's one of those things. What does mental health look like? And what is it going to look like in the future? We, we have the power to write that story. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, we do. Larry, yeah. one of the things that you said in there that I wanted to pick up on too was um, we've been talking about knowing people really well, asking, how are you? And then seeing if there's a change. So I just wanted to pick out a subtlety of that, that, you know, we need to know people and care about the people that we're working with, even before they might be stressed out about something. We need to build that trust up initially, or else we're not going to know when something's going wrong. So, I mean, I think, that's such a good point because mental health isn't just about like when you're in crisis, it's about, you know, getting to know those around you and understanding what their triggers and signs are. Yeah, absolutely. I did a video um, earlier in the week, you know, as I was talking to a friend of mine and she was saying, you know, Joyce, I can do tough. I can do, it's just gotten tough. She said, but I can do tough. And then we both at a point, we said at the same time, we're like, but it's so much right? Yeah. And so my video was like, when does so much become too much for people? That's right. You know, That's right. when, when does so much become too much? Right. And so people are, we're all operating for the most part at some period, some, some length of time into so much mm -hmm. and, and, you know, and we don't stop it and, and, until it becomes too much. And sometimes too much is too late. Yeah. Yep. So true. So mm -hmm. true. I think one of the things that we need to do is continue to have the conversation, continue to promote uh, the resources and, and destigmatize. I think the more we talk about it and folks yes. normalize it, especially, I mean, in, in communities of color, I, I know that my father grew up in Baltimore City. And it's one of those things where the expectation is you, 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 uh, you put some dirt on it and you move on. Uh, we don't cry, 
Well, it's one of those things where uh, emotions are emotions. It's okay. You don't need to be a superhero. You don't need to put that cape on. And it's something that I've been challenged with for most of my life and my career of putting on that that shield, that mask. I, I like to call it ego. That ego of, yeah. I've got to do it all on my own. No, it's not weakness to ask for help. Yeah. When you need help, you ask for it. And I'm trying my best to teach that to my son, to my daughter, that, hey, if you need help, you better ask somebody. Because if you keep it up, like you said, Joyce, it could be too late. Hindsight is always 2020. It's like, uh-oh, I shoulda, coulda, woulda, yeah. but I didn't. Yeah. yeah. That, you know, and it's funny too, with, with kids, Larry, I was reading a parenting book and it said, same thing, like teach them to ask for help. But the biggest thing you can do for them is when they ask you for help, help them. Because so many parents, and I'm so guilty of this, by the way, um, when my kids ask me for help, I'm like, no, do it yourself. Be independent. Put on your own gosh darn shoes, right? Um, Dust yourself off, son. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it's uh yeah it's interesting because now i just you know i try and stop myself and i try and say they're asking me for help i'm gonna help them because then they'll know you know that that when somebody else asks them for help they they should help them too absolutely well you know what you guys time is like it just goes by fast it really does oh, if, you know um you know i said this week in my video that, um, you know, take time, you know, if you need time, a lot of companies have EAP um, programs, employee right. assistance programs, go to your employee assistance program. I've utilized it, you know, during, you know, a troubled time. I utilize it during divorce, loss of life, you know, where you can go and have um, sections with a counselor, you know, um, like Lindsay say, ask for help. You know, you can start there. You can start at outside sources or resources if you don't want to be within the company organization. But definitely take that time to ask for help. That's that's right. That's right. Great point. This was an amazing discussion. And I love it because I know there's someone out there that needs to hear this right now. And I know I needed to hear this right now. So I want to say mm -hmm. thank you to Joyce and Lindsay for uh for, for us facilitating this discussion. Yep. Thank you, Larry. Thank you, Joyce. This thank is one of our more serious ones, but I feel like yes, it was totally worth yes. it. Big and, time. you know, um, yeah. I, it looks like um, my mom found us on Facebook and she said, oh, you guys are doing a really amazing job. Thank you, mommy. Thanks Hi, for getting up with mom. us this morning. <laughs> yes. Well, this has uh, been the sales view. Um, I think oh, we got it. Bye, I'm Lindsay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Larry. And I'm Joyce. What actions do we take to actually see different outcomes? That is the question. Welcome to the sales view. Thank you for joining us.